This is the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Then Jesus said to the disciples, There was a rich man who had a manager, and charges were brought to him that this man was squandering his property. So he summoned him and said to him, What is this that I hear about you? Give me an accounting of your management, because you cannot be my manager any longer. Then the manager said to himself, What will I do now that my master is taking the position away from me? I am not strong enough to dig, and I am ashamed to beg. I have decided what to do, so that when I am dismissed as a manager, people may welcome me into their homes. So, summoning his master's debtors one by one, he asked the first, How much do you owe my master? He answered, A hundred jugs of olive oil. And he said to him, Take your bill, sit down quickly, and make it fifty. He then asked another, And how much do you owe? He replied, A hundred containers of wheat. And so he said to him, Take your bill and make it eighty. And his master commended the dishonest manager because he had acted shrewdly. For the children of this age are more shrewd in dealing with their own generation than are the children of light. And I tell you, make friends for yourselves by means of dishonest wealth so that when it is gone, they may welcome you into the eternal homes. Whoever is faithful in a very little is faithful also in much, and whoever is dishonest in a very little is dishonest also in much. If then you have not been faithful with the dishonest wealth, who will entrust you to the true riches? And if you have not been faithful with what belongs to another, who will give you what is their own? No slave can serve two masters, for a slave will either hate the one and love the other, or be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and wealth. The Gospel of the Lord. Grace to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Every once in a while when I uh, find myself either in a hotel room or just at home kind of flipping through the TV channels, I, I find myself distracted, usually somewhere between ESPN2 and ESPN8 as you're flipping through. Uh, every so often I come across uh, what happens to be on that channel quite a lot, a, a poker tournament of some kind or another. And I'm not a big poker player myself, I don't, I don't play a whole lot, but I really do enjoy watching these tournaments. I'm never really looking for them when I turn on the TV, but if I find one, I, I definitely stay there a while, and it's, it's something kind of interesting. Usually you see some kind of like no-limit Texas Hold'em poker tournament in Vegas, and there's millions of dollars in the pot. And over the years, I've spent enough time watching these that I, I can tell you there are kind of fundamentally two types of poker players. There's two types of poker players you'll see on any of these tournaments, and, and the first type is somebody who has technically mastered the game of poker. They've memorized every possible hand. They know the statistical probability of their hand winning every time based on what other cards have been dealt, based on what they have in their hand, based on how many people are around the table. These kinds of players have spent sometimes years memorizing all of these things, and they can play technically perfect games of poker for hours on end. The second kind of poker player is the kind of poker player that always knocks out the first kind. These are the kind of poker players that might know a lot of the statistical stuff, but they've discovered that the game of poker is not played with the cards in your hands. The game of poker is played by looking into the eyes of the person sitting across from you. The second kind of poker player doesn't just play their cards, they play their opponents. They're 
learning, and they see every little twitch, every little thing that the other person does, and by having this kind of relationship with the people across from them and their table, they can win again and again and again. I think there's something related to this, this phenomenon, this idea of a relationship taking you further than the cards you're dealt can on their own. I think there's something of that in this story that Jesus tells. Now, the story that Jesus tells in today's gospel lesson isn't an easy one to understand. Jesus tells lots of parables, and this one, at least for me, is pretty confusing. It's confusing because the person that Jesus kind of lifts up in this story, the main character, this dishonest manager, is objectively not a good person. He's kind of failing at his job, he's about to get fired, and he's stealing from his master in the process, cutting down on these debts, trying to kind of weasel his way out of this difficult situation he's gotten into. He doesn't appear to be a good person, and yet Jesus is holding him up. And it's hard to understand why. But I think a hint, just a hint of it, has to do with this idea of investing and and trusting in in relationships and the people around us instead of just in our wealth and the cards that we've been dealt. You see, this dishonest manager, even though he's getting absolutely everything wrong, has figured out some fundamental truth of the world. And this fundamental truth is that trust in our own careers or our own finances or in things of any kind is ultimately misplaced. And that where our trust needs to lie, where our trust will actually do us good in our lives is when we place it in the people around us. This dishonest manager, even though he's doing everything wrong, is divesting his trust and his uh, power in the things that he owns and can control, and he's putting it into the community that he lives in. He's putting it out into these people that he knows and that he meets, into these relationships. And in doing that, it's kind of like in the game of life, he's going from being the first kind of poker player to the second. Now, if you look in the Gospels and you're trying to figure out what Jesus has to say about a particular topic, there are many, many topics in which we have no answer at all. There are many things that we want to know what God might say, and we want to know what Jesus would say about X, Y, or Z in our life. And if you look in the Gospels, Jesus doesn't say anything about them. Money is not one of those things. Jesus seems to always be talking about money and wealth and He's pretty clear whenever Jesus is talking to someone who is rich, and just to be clear, anybody in this room right now, if we were in Jesus' day, we would probably qualify as one of those rich people. Anytime Jesus is talking to someone who is rich, his message again and again is the same. Sell what you have. Give it away. Give it up. Don't trust in what you've stored up for yourselves. Don't trust in the things you have. Give it all away and follow me. Even at the end of this parable, Jesus says something very similar. You cannot serve God and wealth. Now, I don't know about you, but that's pretty hard. If you in your life right now are ready to do exactly what the gospel has called us to do, exactly what Jesus has called us to do, to give everything away and follow Jesus, I would really love to talk to you right now. Because I I can't do that. I am not there. It's not easy for me. I like the things I have. I like my house. I like having a retirement account and accounts for my kids when they go off to college. And I I do trust in those things that they will be there for me. I'm not ready to make that step that Jesus is calling each of us to make, to give it away and to follow God, to put all our trust on God's plan for our life, wherever that may be. Maybe you are. And if you're ready to do that, I'll give you, you have an excused absence from the rest of the sermon here on out. If you're ready to do what Jesus calls, you know, you can go get a drink of water, take the bathroom break, whatever, come join us at the end. But if you're not ready for that, if you're not sure you can take that step that Jesus really calls us to take, I think this story, this parable that Jesus tells is for you. 
Because this story that Jesus tells is not about a truly good person who gives up everything they have so that they can follow Jesus. It's not the perfect example. This story is about someone who's taking that first step from divesting in the things that they own and the power they've accumulated and investing it in the people and relationships around them. He's not even doing it honestly or in an arguably moral way, but he's still held up because he's figured out that truth of the world and that truth of God. That God is at work in our lives through the relationships around us and not through the things that we have. This dishonest manager, as many things as he's messed up, has one thing right, and that is hope for each and every one of us. Because no matter how many times we've failed, no matter how many times we've heard the gospel of Jesus calling us to give what we have away and not gone home and done it, we can still make that first step. We can still make that first step of moving our trust away from the things that we own and into the people that surround us in our day-to-day life. This is what Jesus is calling us to do. This is a new way of looking at the world. We live in a world that tells us the things that we can trust are that new truck that we can buy or our savings account or a bank or literally a trust fund that we can set up. And yet we have a God who tells us the only thing we can trust is God at work in the world through the people around us through those relationships that we build over time, through those moments and interactions with people that we never expected. God is calling us to move and not be like the first poker player, but be like the second that knows that to get further ahead in this world, it's not about having things. It's about connecting with the world around us, with the people around us. This is God's call to us today to trust in the people that God has put in our lives, to trust that God is at work, to trust that God will provide for us even if the cards we're dealt don't look so great. It's not easy. But in those moments when we get our job right, even if it's the tiniest step toward trusting a neighbor instead of trusting in some kind of fund that we have in our bank account, In those moments when we get it right, we get a glimpse of God at work in the world. We get a glimpse of God working through the people and places we never expected God to be. And sometimes we even get a glimpse of God working through us, through our own hands and feet, through our own voices, through our hearts building and maintaining new relationships. Those moments, Those moments are the ones that change us. Those moments are the ones that send us out and urge us to trust just a little bit more in what God has made and not what we have stored up for ourselves. Those moments are what lead us down a path when we can one day say to Jesus, who is calling us to leave everything behind and follow him, yes. It's not easy. It's not something that comes naturally. It's not something that is a simple process. But again and again, God is calling us to make those steps. One moment, one day, one relationship at a time. And so, at the end of this story, we hear Jesus asking us, where do you put your trust? Amen.